This week in World News, we focus on the poisoning of Russian political activist Alexei Navalny, severe weather headed for North Korea, and much more. Our coverage begins right now. Good evening and welcome to this week's segment of World News. We're going to begin tonight in Africa, where global health campaigners are saying they have achieved a major milestone, eradicating polio from Africa. The World Health Organization made the announcement on Tuesday. Officials confirmed that the last case was diagnosed four years ago in Nigeria. Governments and nonprofits alike have been working on vaccination campaigns since 1996 to try and eradicate the virus from the continent. Now, wild strains of polio can only circulate in two countries, Afghanistan and Pakistan. Moving along to Germany, where doctors treating Russian political activist Alexei Navalny in Berlin say tests indicate he was poisoned, confirming what many had feared over the past days. CNN's Matthew Chance has more from Moscow. Well, German doctors are confirming what many already suspected, that Alexei Navalny, outspoken Kremlin critic, was poisoned. The exact substance has not yet been identified, but the clinic in Berlin, where Navalny remains in a coma, said the substance was of a type that acts on the nervous system. The statement said that uh, Navalny has been treated with atropine, which is a medication which is an antidote to some nerve agents and some pestic pesticides as well. The long-term effects of the poisoning, say Navalny's doctors, are still um, unclear. Well, there's been a joint statement from the German Chancellor and Foreign Minister calling on Russia to, quote, clear up this crime uh, to the last detail and to do so in full transparency. Those responsible must be identified and held responsible and accountable, the statement said. From Navalny, a prominent anti-corruption campaigner in Russia, fell sick on a flight to Moscow last week, forcing the plane to make an emergency landing in the Siberian city of Omsk, where he was hospitalized. Russian doctors say they found no evidence of poisoning Navalny supporters say that was a cover-up to hide evidence that yet another Kremlin critic has been brutally attacked. Matthew Chance, CNN Moscow. The Kremlin is denying any involvement from Russian President Vladimir Putin in the poisoning. However, a spokesperson for Navalny says, quote, it was obvious that the crime would not be properly investigated and the culprit is found. However, all we know perfectly well who he is, end quote. Now on to the battle between Turkey, Greece, Cyprus and the rest of the European Union over drilling in the eastern Mediterranean Sea. Oil and gas drilling rights there are, dis are disputed between Turkey and EU member Greece. David McAllister, the chair of the European Parliament Foreign Affairs Committee, told CNN this topic will be on the agenda at the upcoming EU foreign ministers meeting. And Cyprus, and we call Turkey to immediately end the illegal drilling activities in Greek and Cypriot territorial waters, and we also demand that Turkey immediately stops violating their territorial waters and their airspace. In a study from the U.S. Geological Survey from 2010, there was roughly 1.7 billion barrels of oil and 122 trillion cubic feet of gas in the eastern Mediterranean. Greece believes Turkey exploring this area is illegal, with a government spokesman saying, quote, Greece is responding calmly and with readiness both on a diplomatic and on an operational level, end quote. He goes on to say that Greece is prepared to do everything to defend the country's sovereign rights. North Korean leader Kim Jong-un held an emergency meeting on Tuesday, according to the state-run agency KCNA. The agency reported that the meeting's goal was to discuss the state's emergency measures to overcome the coronavirus and that it, quote, assessed some defects in the state emergency anti-epidemic work, end quote. The state agency also said that Kim Jong-un addressed the strong Typhoon Bavi, which is expected to approach the country in the next days. Typhoon Bavi is expected to make landfall on Thursday at the equivalent of a Category 1 hurricane. However, due to North Korea's weak infrastructure, the country is very vulnerable to any storm of this magnitude. Finally tonight, we rarely do have good news regarding the coronavirus. However, vaccine news has been becoming more and more common, not only in the United States. SUTV's Nolan Hoffman has a look at Germany's quest for a vaccine. Germany who have been recently conducting studies for COVID-19 that involved large gatherings, including multiple pop concerts in the country, have came out with another significant statistic 
involving the spread of the virus. Take a look. A German study found that 85% of COVID-19 patients showed at least one symptom of the disease. The research was conducted by Robert Koch Institute with more than 2,100 patients between late June and early July. Those with coronavirus antibodies reported experiencing symptoms such as fever, shortness of breath, or coughing. The researchers explained that it shows the importance of testing people based on their symptoms. The study also found that 40% of the patients previously tested positive for COVID-19 no longer had antibodies. However, the scientists warned that it doesn't mean they are not immune to the virus. With SUTV, I'm Ellen Huffman. And that's the world news for this week. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure you follow SUTV News on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter for all the latest in breaking news surrounding the ship community, sports, and much more. For all of us at SUTV News, I'm Jacob Pitts. Good night.